Hello everyone and welcome back for some more of Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. And this episode is mostly going to be about power and core mining I guess because I've, I've uh, been just sort of picking up a, a few more um, core mining facilities around the solar system because I've, I feel like I've been a bit short of a lot of the mundane resources recently. So there's not been enough of the, um, there's not been enough iron and copper and all that sort of stuff that's coming through from the core fragments over on Norvis. So if we take a quick look at that. Um, on Norvis, we have this facility down, 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 down here, where spaceships come in with trains full of core fragments on. The trains come out, dump the core fragments here, and then get back round onto the spaceship again. The core fragments come out; they're processed here by these uh, pulverizers and turned into all of the uh, the various mundane materials that we need. The um, so we've got iron ore, copper, stone, coal, tiny, tiny amount of uranium, and a bit of vulcanite as well. And all of that gets sorted out onto into these stations, as you've seen a bajillion times before. So this all this all works. It's just not fast enough. If we come through here and look at this, we've got oh, actually, as I say that, we've got eighty-one thousand iron. That's pretty good. Uh, Thirty-two thousand copper. That's not bad. Twenty-three thousand stone. That's sort of okay. So any of these, if they're above twenty thousand, that's good because that means there's enough in there for a train to come along and and and, get, and get, pick it up and take it off to somewhere useful. If they're un, if they're if they're under twenty thousand, then we're not producing enough of that. So obviously uranium is very very slow. So we're never going to produce enough of that. Vulcanite apparently also a bit slow. But all the other ones do seem to be above twenty thousand. That said, I want to see them all be above 40,000 because that means a train can come in and it'll still be okay. So even if there's a bit, of, a little bit of a, a surge in demand, we'll, we'll still have enough of all of the resources from that. So it's, it's, it's okay actually, but it could be better. But so in order to, um, so, so a part of the, the um, of getting this up and running was I came out to Asalia. And this was in the previous episode, so you, you will already have seen this. I apologise for repeating myself, but I'm going to anyway. Um, and I set up these core mining drills here because because why not? And then they're pulverising the core fragments out into into the um, to get the oil out of them, and then you get the the normal dry core fragments coming out here. So these these ones coming in here are the oily ones. Um, these ones you can just about make out the oil drop on them, and then they turn into normal core fragments, stone and um, and a bit of oil. That all gets passed out. The, the stone and the core fragments go into the train here, as you've seen them a, a million times before. And the uh, the oil gets put into here, where it gets loaded into trains and taken off to be turned into rocket fuel, or shipped off um, as as just as oil itself, um, it, as required. Where, where... <laughs> um, I to be honest, I should probably put in a turnaround point on here because that train's going to take a very very long route to get there. But never mind, doesn't really matter. So the prop this this is all very good. This 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 works, um, and it, it it is now working. It's working absolutely fine. The problem is um, that Asalia is a very very small planetoid. I mean, if we zoom out, you can see that it, it, that's pretty small. Um, and so it's a bit basically that means you get you get the all, all core fragments coming out very very slowly. So we're not actually getting all that much stuff from here, which is why there's still a train sitting here, tra trains trains everywhere, or any of or any of these trains full. They're not, and I don't even have the full four trains here that I should have because I've realised it's so slow. There's no point. It doesn't. It the, the trains are not the limiting factor. So it, it it it's slow basically is what I'm trying to say. And also for some reason it's not very even. There's like oh I've used the wrong type of splitter here, uh, uh, balancer here again as usual because my blueprints are all blooming wrong. Um, it's actually not even blueprints, it's just copy paste. So this is this is actually a four to six instead of a four to five. And so this one what i was gonna say this one should get twice as much but this is actually the one that's getting less i don't know what's going on there this is all a bit weird but it's not working as efficiently as, as smoothly as it should because there's an excess in these especially that one blimey um whereas there's um and and, and not enough in this one so the, the train it's a bit unbalanced but eventually things will sort themselves out these these will all fill up and then um It'll, it'll even out to an extent, so I don't care too much about that. I would rather have done it properly, but in but in hindsight, but never mind. So yes, this is a bit slow because it's a small planet means sm means slow um, slow core mining drills. So we're not getting all that much stuff out, which is why I pulled out all of these extra pulverizers that are normally along here. They're just completely unnecessary. So, but that is basically working. The biggest problem we had here with this was it was using far too much power because core miners use um, 50 megawatts each, which isn't, I mean, these days that's not an enormous amount of power, but for the amount I had on this planet, as you can see coming along here, we're going up, bang, straight into the t top to maximum amount of power we could we could create here, and it just, it just wasn't able to keep up. Um, so, 
what I did for the, to fix that is the, the, the pretty much the standard thing. You'll have, you'll have probably guessed this if you've watched any any amount of this. Over here, I put in a, a beam receiver and two of the high temperature heat exchangers and a high temperature turbine generator. And this this tiny little thing here, well, we can produce we can produce all, we can bring in as much energy as we want to this. Um, these will take 500 megawatts each. Um, this will take up to a gigawatt, and then these will produce some tiny, tiny amount over the top, but they're necessary to get rid of the excess steam that comes out here. So this tiny little thing produces twice as much power as this entire nuclear facility here, and it doesn't use any uranium. So what I've done is I've got this up and running, and I've put in a switch down here that's monitoring how much power is in these um, accumulators, and if we ever do manage to use the entire um, more than a gigawatt of power, then this alarm will go off and this, this switch will close. So we will then start using power from the nuclear plant, but until then, we are just using the power from here. Um, so that they, this this should be absolutely fine. If we, no, not that one. If we look at the power, not that one either. If we look at the power, we have... We're using 740 megawatts that's out of the gigawatt that's available, so that's absolutely fine. We could, we can have this kick in and for a gigawatt and a half, so we can double the amount of power we're using and it will still be okay. But I'd rather have it slightly, slightly, slightly over than under, especially as we don't have an enormous amount of uranium left. There's like um, 18, 18, about 18,000 in this in this station, so there is a decent there's a decent amount backed up here. But the uranium mine where this is coming from is completely empty now. So, well, apart from the apart from the 2,000 in the chest, it is it, the, the uranium supply has run out. So I'm glad we've moved away from uranium for the for now. It's going to make you keep things uh, running a little bit better. And so, of course, in order to get this beam receiver up and running, we need to have the power being beamed from somewhere. And that meant to trip off to Kalidus orbit again. You've seen this sort of thing before, but I'm continuing with my attempt to build a basically a Dyson sphere around Kalidus with all of these solar panels. This is crazy. Um, and then this bank of beam beam um, emitters over here that are all sending off different amounts of power to different places. So we've got this one, for example, it's got five um, injectors powering it. That's firing at um, Tulip because Tulip uses a massive quantity of power due to excess, use, due to rather greedy usage of um, uh, of modules. We've got this one that is that's up to eight. That's for that's for recharging a ship though. So the ship is only there occasionally, so it needs to be charged up really really quickly. There's a big one. There's one for Norvis here. That's only sending two gigawatts, but you know, it, that that's enough. Norvis isn't doing all that much anymore. So, we've got all, of, yeah, we've got all of these things sending off different amounts of power to different places to keep everything running happily, and then all of this solar generating generating the power for it. And you can see that these are running at almost, uh, these are running at 1500% normal of the normal um, capacity. So these are producing 12 megawatts each. Yes, there are some transmission losses in the beams, um, like the one that goes to here. We, we we've got 64% efficiency to Norvis orbit. We've got um, 64% to Norvis as well, apparently, so that's not bad. But So you're losing a bit of the power, but you gain so much from these solar panels that it's worth it. And it's it's much better than putting the solar panels on the planet, and it's still quite a lot better than putting them in orbit, I think. Um, I think I had to look into this, because someone was asking, someone was saying they, they on, on, on the stream chat that they build their um, their space station in Kalidus orbit for the really, really easy power all of these all these producing 1500 percent power output and so i had a look and it turns out actually for norvis orbit norvis orbit isn't actually that bad the solar panels here are still kicking out 900 percent 932 percent power um i say 932 because it's plus 832 plus 100 percent it would normally provide so 932 in total which is like it's two it's almost two thirds of what the one in um, Kalidus orbit is producing so given that the the simplest the slightly simpler um, logistics of getting stuff to here i think I think this is the best an the best answer. I suppose that means I could consider. Now here's here's something here's something that's a bit of a, a question. What if I built a giga two gigawatt three gigawatts of um, solar in Norvis orbit, and then a beam generator here firing at Norvis? Would that be more efficient or less efficient overall? Would that or rather would that yeah would that require more um, more solar panels to produce two gigawatts of power on Norvis or less? And my feeling is it's going to be a, hmm, it's going to be similar, because firing at Norvis orbit, we seem to get 64% uh, throughput, and that's about that's pretty close to the amount of power that the solar panels are generating. So I think it's probably it prob probably doesn't really matter whether you put your solar generate generation in Kalidus orbit or in Norvis orbit, or, or sorry, or in orbit around the planet that needs that um, that power. It's just that having the solar panels down on the surface of the planet is much much less 
good. Here we here you see this. Well, it's 100% efficient. 100% because Norvis is the reference point. So we get almost 10 times as much power from having them up in space, and then we get 15 times as much power for having them in, uh, around Kalidas. So it yeah, it, it seems like a good place to keep them. So I'm, I'm going to carry on doing that. So that got Asalia up and running. We've got all the power we need from here. It's running over here happily. We're generating the, we're, we're producing the core fragments, stick them onto trains, albeit rather slowly, and th that can then be brought off to Norvis. Now to make this a bit quicker, I then decided it'd be a good idea to go off to Trellos, and this is a new planet for me, but the reason I've come here is because it's a big planet, 8,000 um, in radius, diameter radius, um, and that means there's a lot of, when you when you put, a, put in a core miner, it's going to produce a lot of core fragments. Um, so it's going to be a bit more efficient, a bit more effective because of that. So I came out here. However, because it's 8,000, that means it's really expensive in fuel to lift off again. And I'd just been to, so I, <laughs> I went to Norvis in my, um, in my, in my ship, uh, this ship, no, not this ship, this ship, went to Norvis, um, loaded up on all the stuff I was going to need in order to build this mine, new mining facility, then flew straight to Trellos and landed there. Um, and I sort of really like, expected this to be a problem in advance, but of course, landing, doing that, I used up most of the fuel taking off from Norvis, like 60% of it or something, and then I then needed another 80% in order to take off from Trellos. So that meant I couldn't take off. That was a bit. So it was a little bit of a fail there. So I was stranded on um, on Trellos for most of the last stream. Now, as you can see by the fact that I'm standing here inside my spaceship, um, I have clearly managed to escape. So let's have a look at how I did that and what happened. So it came in, landed on Trellos, thought, okay, we'll set up, first, always the first thing to do is to set up one of these beam receiver things, um, because these take ages and ages to heat up, and until they're hot, you don't really have any power available, um, which is why there's a solar panel here to kickstart, to bootstrap the pump here and get some of the water, get some water out to get this to start generating. Now this clearly has, in, the, in that time, has now managed to get up to full power, so they, it, did, it did eventually work. But while I was here, I set up a um, I set up a core mining facility. So the standard two core miners, four rows of um, of pulverizers. So, and as you can see, these two core miners are producing practically basically an entire entire blue belt between them. In fact, they would be producing a blue belt between them if we were able to process the ore fragments fast enough. Uh, so I didn't want to put an extra two there. So I put the next two up here and gave them their own um, its own banks of core of, of core miners. And this is now a core completely ground to a halt. Um, and this is because, as previously mentioned, this is an oily planet, so it produces oil-laden oil core fragments. You can just about... You probably can't just about see, but there are there are oil drops on those core fragments, so we're, we're pulverising those. But the problem is, we then, need, we then have an enormous amount of oil that's filled up all of these tanks, and we're going, oh, we've got load, what am I going to do with all this oil? So I started, I put, I dropped in some... Um, uh, some uh, fuel refineries up here, and so these 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 banks here are making the um, the liquid fuel, liquid rocket fuel that I then brought down here to refuel my spaceship in order to get me off the planet. And that because it ran relatively slowly, that took about two hour two and a half hours I think to fill my spaceship up. The biggest problem was that I only had one of these oil refineries to start with, so I put that in, filled it up with speed modules, and it just couldn't cope with the well, it. It was it, it it couldn't use up the oil as fast as it was being produced. It couldn't produce the oil fast enough to get to, to produce um, the various petroleum products fast enough to make the oil uh, the rocket fuel over here. So I ended up um, crushing some core fragments down here in order to uh, no taking out some core fra pulverizing some core fragments here to make the various different um, metal ores and then processing them down here in some very very um, stone age. Uh, facilities. So this was this was this was some serious early game Factoria going on here. I made made some uh, stone furnaces out of stone I found lying on the floor, and then powered them with coal I got out of these rocks and some wood that was lying left in the spaceship. Um, and then thankfully somebody on the um, on on the stream pointed out that actually I could just set up this uh, one another one of my pulverizers to turn the um, turn the core fragments into all of the resources I needed so I didn't actually have to use this um, this burner mining drill over here for, to get to get all the the coal the uh, to get all the iron ore and copper ore that's going to need but it was it, it was looking a bit silly at one point but I used that to make another four oil refineries it's now running a bit quicker it's still a bit slow because these this isn't enough I need to come out here with about ten times as many perhaps and so my theory is that we'll have 
the um, the oil that comes out of these core fragments is, is a little bit of a problem because there's more of it than I know what to do with. So the, the normal core fragments, that's, that's fine, I pump them down here, they, the core fragments and the, and the stone go into the trains and and then they'll eventually they'll go into the spaceship down here and that's that's sort of fine, that can be shipped away as normal. But I need to do something with all the oil that's produced as a byproduct. So my thought was, well I'll turn it into rocket fuel and we'll feed it into the um, into the train, in, into the spaceship down here so it's got enough fuel to lift off again. And I think that might be going to work vaguely well I I don't really know I need to sort of keep an eye on this and and work out and see how it balances between the fuel being generated and the um, um, and, and, and the uh, and these things being generated now it doesn't matter if there's not quite enough rocket fuel because the ship should land with some fuel on it already uh, so that might that may well be okay but if there's a lot of, but if it's producing if it's producing too much oil then that could be a problem and we'll just have to see, we'll have to sort of just just keep a bit of an eye on this and see see how it goes oh that's a, that's why all these things are broken because I've, oh now i feel stupid um <laughs> so what was the other one the other one was on a sailor has that got the same thing is that why i was having problems there yes it has oh for goodness sake well, at least I found why the problem happens now, even if it's going to take a while to, to fix itself. Um, okay, so that's a bit stupid. So obviously I was trying to rebalance one of them somewhere to get round this balance and not being set up problem. And then it's just, I didn't notice when I copied and pasted it. Ah, oh, it's really stupid. <laughs> anyway, back on Trellos. We've got this, yeah, this system is basically, it's basically working. The big question is whether the rate of oil production and rate of fragment production here, core fragment production, is going to be nicely balanced for the system that's set up. We shall see. Um, that's pretty much all there is to say about Trellos, I think. Uh, I did put in some uh, meteorite defense guns here and chucked in a load of ammunition. Um, why, are these, why is that charging so slowly? Are we short of power here? No. I don't know why that's charging so slowly. Maybe they just charge slowly. Uh, there's loads of power available. Um, yeah, so I put in these meteorite defense guns. Eventually, I'll have the mortar being automatically loaded onto these spaceships as they fly across, and we'll be able to then unload them into this chest and onto here, and we'll have a, have a, have a steady supply of them. But for now, I brought these out manually. So that's another thing that needs, to, needs a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of setup. But I'm not... Um, yeah, nearly there. Finally, there's one other little thing I've done. Um, so because I got stranded on Trellos for so long and was fiddling around with that for ages, I... I've not done quite as much as I sometimes do, although it felt like a pretty good stream. I had, well, I had a good time anyway. <laughs> I also discovered that the um, the production of nanomaterials had stopped. Um, that was a fairly simple fix. It turned out it was due to, I think, right down. Oh no, it was one of the inputs for the nanomaterial construction. Somewhere, somewhere there was a belt that had got polluted by with a um, with a single. Um, uh, aeroframe pole where it's been meant to be carrying aeroframe bulkheads I think uh, so it probably means it was back I don't know for sure where it was but somewhere somewhere it got polluted and that caused everything to, and that caused everything to, a, 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 a splitter to jam and it caused everything to back up so I fixed that now hopefully it won't happen again but we shall wait and see um, I'll, I'll, it looks like it's, it looks like everything is caught up though the the station up here is full so everything is reasonably hunky-dory now so that seems to be fairly good while I'm here, let's take a quick look at the uh, deep space science production because I'm, I'm curious as how that's running. Um, not running is the answer. Why is it not running? Because this has run out of something. What have you run out of? You have run out. No, you have run out of naquium cubes because what have we run out of over here that's causing naquium cubes to fail? We've run out of naquium. What? I thought we had loads of naquium. I could have sworn we had plenty. Oh, we've got 313. Okay, that's not very much. Um, okay, so Naquium appears to be a little bit of a problem. That will obviously be the thing I look at in the next episode then, because... Or the next stream then, because I need Naquium, and apparently I need more Naquium than I'm currently getting. And I have to admit, I haven't looked at it at all for the last stream, so I, w I was far too busy distracted by other things. So, yeah, we'll come back. We'll have a look at that. We'll get that sorted out later. Um... And come along on Wednesday, no, not this Wednesday because I'm, I'm, I'm busy, but uh, otherwise busy, but I'll be back the week Wednesday after to sort this out, so I'll uh, <laughs> hopefully see you then and we can get this sorted out then, once, once and uh, for all, or twice and for all, or how many times and for all. Um, but potentially, we do we have many data packs coming in? We, oh, we do, we've got, actually, we're doing pretty well on the on the Deep Space Science, we've got hundreds of, um, in fact, we've got over a thousand Deep Space Science Catalogue 2s here, so... 
I was going to say maybe we don't care. No, we do care because we're going, we're going to need a lot of um, not a lot more Naquim, a lot more Naquim cubes for making all of the uh, for, for making the next levels of science. So I do need to sort of get the get the um, infrastructure sorted out before I strike push on too far. But I'm not that far off it really. It's things are going quite well here. I could I could get some more research going if there's anything I remotely cared about that used um, Naquim uh, packs one and two. So I'd get that one for example. That'd be a useful one to have and that one so I can do the next pack. Um, and 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 okay so that's everything thank you very much for watching uh don't forget to come back on not this wednesday but the wednesday after for the next stream and mon every monday we're for the minecraft streams as well so we'll be playing carrying on with minecraft we're doing lots of automation in that as well now so it's getting more and more factorio -y the more we play and there's the gta videos on thursday as long as i can keep up with making them and i just about can even though i was on holiday last week um and these catch-up videos come out at the weekend as you're well aware because you're watching one of them right now Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.